Good morning, everybody, and good evening for those who are tuning in from other places. We are doing live on one of my favorite topics, karma, with none other than my favorite Guruji Dimasi Healing Village. So I'm going to do I. We are going to pin this comment and uh, we're going to get started. So today what we're going to do and, you know, from now onwards, we're going to change the format a little bit. Eventually, you know, I'm planning to do this in a, in a different way so that we can take topic by topic and address it, you know, have whole seasons really dedicated to a certain topic. But for today, what we're going to do is because karma is such an impro- important topic and we got so much so many questions last time related to it. So the goal today was to come on, pick up where we left, really talk about karma a little bit and uh, and take questions as well. So keep your questions coming, though I will ask that keep the questions relevant to the conversation at hand. You know, we're talking about karma. We're trying to understand karma from differently. So it's very uh, it's very tempting sometimes when we're having this conversation to constantly bring in our preconceived notions. And what I have found really, really useful, hi BJ, what I have found very, very useful is when I talk to Guruji to come as a blank slate, to try and just erase everything that I know and literally just take in what he's telling me. And I think that's when even the questions become relevant because your questions are related not to preconceived notions, which is fine if they come up once in a while, but it, I think it, it, at least it gives me a different level of understanding. So I would love for others to have that same experience. Oh, let me see. He's here. Guruji is here, guys. Yay. And hello to all of you. View request. Go live. Guruji. <coughs> Let's do this. And I see a lot of you have tuned in at early hours in the morning. Some of you are late in the evening. Guruji. Pranam Guruji. Namaste. Pranam Guruji. Is your, are you, is your connection okay, Guruji? You're experiencing okay connection? I think uh, network is again a problem. It's a problem today. And the spirit right now... I want to so we will let Narad Muni do what it does, which that it does, and I'm sure we'll be able to. Uh, we'll be able to. Oh, so you know, Guruji is uh, is. I'm sure he'll experience. He'll figure the connection out, and he'll do this. But I also wanted to say while I'm here is that uh, my parents are in town for this week from India. And I've never really spoken about it because it's really too close to my heart is the relationship that I have with my dad. It's the closest thing to my heart ever. And uh, he's just a lot of every a, a, a lot of what I know comes from him. And uh, it's just so it's so sensitive to me that I just don't even talk about it. But while he's here, I'm actually going to do a live with him as well and I just feel like when my dad and I talk it's just two souls talking it's just I think I get lost in I get lost and I would love uh, I would love to have a chat with him as well live so I'm going to be doing that sometime this week and I'm sure um, Guruji is figuring this out and you know before we start karma and I know last time some of the questions that came up were what is good karma what is bad karma and um, Aguruji had said, there's no such thing as good karma and bad karma. I'm just trying to do a recap of what we said, right? And at least my interpretation of it. And we said, karma is action, right? Thank you. Uh, yeah, it'll be, I think it'll be very exciting to talk to my dad. So karma is just action. And what is the nature of the action that we do? There are actions which take us deeper into the entanglement of life mainly because of the, the kind of emotion that they're done with. And uh, there are actions which detangle us, which kind of unwind us. So the choice is between, you know, this good karma and bad karma 
after I spoke to Guruji, what came to my mind was when I evaluate my actions, I must ask which actions feel tight, which will entangle me, and which actions feel like a flow which will disentangle me. And it's not so much the actions by themselves, like what you are doing. Two people may do the exact same things, um, like, for example, you know, run a business. But if the attitude or if the energy around it is one of flow and disentanglement, then it's kind of taking us closer to who we are. We find ourselves even through our work. And if the attitude is, oh my God, intensity and competition and just really like putting others down and getting ahead, I feel like then we are entangling ourselves and we're going in the opposite direction. So at least that's the understanding that I got, a, got out of it last time um, from, you know, what Guruji, and of course he's, he said it in different words, but you guys already know me. <laughs> that Somehow I have this habit of making my own analogies and, you know, talking about them. But let's see what he has to say today. I'm going to uh, look at this. Oh, thanks, Vijay. That's very sweet of you uh, to say that. I try. So just any book regarding karma. So, you know, also, uh, guys, there's a philosophy course coming up with Guruji. I think a lot of times we are very, we are very uh, tempted to know the source of this knowledge. And it's a wonderful, the Shastras we have, the scriptures we have, they're so wonderful. You know, for years, I struggled with not having the right, the proper guidance, either scriptural reading being too academic or being uh, too rigid. So it's great when we get someone and I just feel like I'm so fortunate to have met so many people like that who will read scriptures and they teach you how to read between the line. All the scriptures that we have, the Vedic scriptures, are really about the interpretation, interpretation of the scriptures. Um, let me see if Guruji is here. No, I don't think he's been able to, to be here. I'm going to to somebody. Guys, I'm so sorry. I know you guys have questions. I'm not going to answer them because I'm going to... Uh, uh, wait for Guruji. You know, the philosophy course, guys, is actually, I put, posted it in my stories. But if you go to the Indemasi Healing Village, um, if you go to the Indemasi Healing Village page, it will happen. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to take this question, at least give you my experience. Can you suggest a good book for the beginning of starting of the spiritual journey? So this is what I found. Is anytime I want to start any journey, the first temptation is to find the book. But that's not how, what has ever worked for me. I'm not saying the book doesn't work, but more that works is really align my intention with the universe, really take some time off every day and become a seeker in that department. I mean, like, let me really learn this. Let me begin. Let me really, you know, I want to go discovering myself. And then you breathe and just open yourself to the universe and you won't believe it. You will find people knocking on your door you will find a book that's come on your instagram feed as an ad you'll find it in your house you will suddenly be surrounded by that conversation you'll suddenly be i mean i i can tell you how many times it works when i work with people i also tell them this and it also works for them but it's really about opening up yourself to that energy in the world it is rarely about finding that book or that so i became i'll be i'll share an honest story with you Feb was a very difficult month for me. And I realized, yeah, I'll tell you, I promise it'll work. And you let me know when you try it. But take time aside before you, before you really get in that intense uh, yearning. Take time aside every morning. So what happened is in Feb, I felt like a lot of, I was having issues with boundaries. I was raised in a joint family and it's my family is crazy. It's amazing. But you know, in, in a lot of families, I see the attitude is me first you know, it's my turn or I, in my family, it's almost like the competition is you first, you know, which is amazing. But also what happened is that you first has carried on to me in other departments of my life. And then I realized in some places, um, I was having a hard time protecting my boundaries. I'll be honest with you. And, you know, I became extra vulnerable. And then I realized, I said, let, it, let the learning come to me. Like, let me understand what I need to understand about this and how to do this and became really patient with myself. And I was amazed. I was amazed how, you know, conversations came up, insights came up, situations came up where I could see myself. Uh, articles came up randomly on my feed um, or the conversation came up with somebody completely random. But I really did feel like in Feb, I was able to do a lot of work on that. 
and it always happens so i would love for any of you all of you to try that uh, to try that and see where you know how it works and where it takes you the most important thing is to be patient with yourself like uh, giving an order at a restaurant once we place the order we know it will come like you know whether it comes in 30 minutes or 10 we know that the order has been given and that's kind of how manifestation works that's how kind of the universe works you set the signal you send the signal out there and things will happen i'm sure if we look at our own lives and we just go back oh guruji is here come on he's here let's do this um hopefully the sound connection will be better and we'll be able to do this guruji namaste pranam guruji pranam much... how are you very well guruji it's much better the connection this time yes yeah clear yeah. and nice guruji so i am also becoming advanced like you know i am no using a headphone now really <laughs> i was not very comfortable <laughs> i only use headphones guruji because i have two children in the house who behave like children and they should behave like children so they're so they're full of noise so i use headphones okay. to kind of cancel that noise otherwise everything will seep into the into our life Good. guruji so what about my audio now it's clear it's very clear guruji it's extremely clear it's oh. perfect very good very good so guruji you know uh, i i was just talking to them that we will be taking questions i i did i took all i took a lot of questions last time as well and even this time why we will have a flow we will be taking questions all the relevant questions right so guruji Fine. and i will talk and then we'll take questions like i did last time in the last uh, the only thing i ask if you ask questions completely different like we are talking about karma and you say i have a corn on my toes i can't we can't take those conversations we can't take those questions i could <laughs> we can't take those questions <laughs> right now those are for my saturday morning live so we started talking about karma last time and mm. um, uh, guruji guruji spoke about you know you told us that people asked us what is good karma and what is bad karma and guruji said karma is an action there is no good karma there is no bad karma so guruji i will let you take it from here let's continue the same question and then let's go into what comes up for us yes karma is action but whose action that is the question it is a cosmic action which is beyond our comprehension gita clearly stating that nahi kaschit chanam api jadu tishtya takarma krad without action no molecule in this world so earth has to rotate solar system has to rotate in an atom electrons has to rotate so everything is subject to action motion so brahmanda kanda pindadya surenevo vinirmada this is said in an old text called shambhu surode each the micro and the macro all are in action technically it is called kala chakra kala means time so based on time everything is moving but or time is a production of this action how we can define time from one spot to another spot how much time this is how we coordinate so karma means an inevitable action or a cosmic action which cannot be understood in our limited intellect so intellect is recognizing something as a drama which we do know what is behind the drama or who is the director of the drama if we want to know we should obliterate the boundaries of our intellect if we are sitting in a train or in a huge ship where everything is provided we can think that oh a, a, a wonderful world is there i am living in this world comfortably but if we come out of the ship and 
see from a long distance we will come to know my goodness the ship was moving where i was living comfortably with a tremendous speed so the sp- space ship is moving it is subject to an action based on that action each and every cell in our body is functioning so that basic knowledge must be there what is karma karma is a cosmic action which is beyond our intellect this manifested world is a consequence of that cosmic action right right guruji so that's a that's the basic foundation of where we should start that this is happening whatever is happening is happening in the universe as a cosmic dance yes. as a cosmic action and yes. um, and our, our desire to put us me me i'm doing this i'm not doing this is uh, is just it's unnecessary because this is all just happening right so now guruji now we come to the uh, of course the as with this background in mind with this background in mind we come to human life mm. and we are born as humans unfortunately and then we take decisions in our life and we do things in our life even kumbhak guruji even the practice of meditation right now while i understand that the basic premise is things are happening through us there is a certain there is a certain free will and i know that we spoke about it last time that when it comes from a place of pragya so guruji let's now come to the question of free will and say as a manushya as a human being when you are born and you you're also born not because you chose to be born because it happened this action happened yes and yet yes. and and yet and yet when we are born there are constant decisions to be made how do we explain what that free will is and the extent to which we play a part in either finding ourselves going back to the cosmic reality or getting entangled in the worldly reality and what is the, so let's talk about that guruji just an example as i told you suppose we are in a huge ship that ship is moving with a 100 miles per hour okay and inside the ship we are conducting a competition sprint 10 people are uh running 100 meters sprint we are organizing mm mm-hmm. suppose the ship is traveling towards east and the competitors are running towards west in the uh, ship <laughs> we may think that oh we are running fast and we are conquering the other one oh number 1 number 2 like that you know uh, we uh, classified the winners but a person who is watching from outside who could see the ship and the guy who is running that will be a, a, you know fun for this person who is looking from outside <laughs> so we are like this we think we have a free will and we can decide things things are happening as per the consequence of this cosmic movement only privilege given to us is that we can think whether i am doing right or wrong whether i am traveling east or north so like that we can think but the reality the happenings are entirely different than what we think mm-hmm. if we want to understand if we want to understand the difference between our mm-hmm. Uh, individual decision and a cosmic happening mm-hmm. we have to go beyond the duality of our mind mm mm-hmm. mm-hmm. mind is always functioning with the two opposites mm mm-hmm. good and bad mm mm-hmm. light and dark mm-hmm. heat and cold mm-hmm. so the mind will will think that oh which side i should lean either to the heat side or the cold side that we can think but the leaning will happen 
as per the instruction from the cosmic law that is got the it. only way got it so i yes. tell me if i'm wrong so guruji what i'm understanding is that in the that our duty then as a human being is not oh i have to run in this direction or i have to run in that direction the duty as a human being is to come to a state where is there is no confusion and you're just going with the flow you're automatically going with the flow of the shit that duality of confusion oh i should run here i should run there all of that entanglement we put into ourselves when we disentangle ourselves we'll automatically be sailing with the ship as a natural action yes this is what only we can do as a yogi or experienced person what i can suggest is you think the way you like but accept what's happening telling ourselves that that is meant by nature suppose i think after this meeting i have to come out and take the car and rush to my home i can think like that but if an accident is waiting for me i will take the car i may i may think that i am uh, taking you know uh, driving carefully i am taking all precautions and everything these are all my privileges to think but if i am supposed to end up in a hospital after an accident by nature whatever may be my will flagrations i will end up in the hospital okay so you know what i'm understanding uh, everybody is that everything is preordained so yes. our desire to control the direction of our lives is kind of stupid because everything is already preordained there is a flow <laughs> of things and whenever we go against and that that is the word that is the meaning of surrender is that the flow of things have already been decided and whenever there is discomfort in action or there is you know you we feel it we feel the resistance you know guruji i can say from my own experience that even though we can't see it we feel the resistance sometimes because it's yes. like running in the opposite direction of that shape. yes and yes. then guruji <laughs> there are times there are times that i work that we all do we just work from a place of flow and we may do a certain action you know because you think and you do it but it is so in line with the direction of that ship that they just happen the the task may look very difficult to somebody else from outside but it just happens because you're doing it in that alignment in that flow so i think what guruji is saying that you may decide which direction you want to run in but if it's in the opposite direction of the universe's flow you're yes. going to face resistance and then we as human beings have this tendency to get really frustrated and say that oh my god this is not working out this is not working out but it's just that knowing that this is not working out is nothing it's you're in the opposite direction of the universe you're going in the opposite direction we need to rewire ourselves change that right wrong duality and let things just happen for us yes this attraction and repulsion we recognize it or we label it as like disturbance or restriction many many things we can label actually each and every cell in our body is being controlled by this cosmic drama or cosmic action like just for example how we think that oh i have a free will that process of thinking is happening only because of the continuous oxygen supply in the nature not only that we have to assimilate that oxygen see what is the chemistry of assimilation of oxygen when we inhale oxygen it has to mix up in blood and hemoglobin should support the oxygen molecule or oxygen atom whatever it is it you know it should move all over the body what is supporting that hemoglobin hemoglobin is having a center as a heart what is that iron atom we know it is scientifically proven that in earth iron atom cannot be produced by any means so from where this iron atom is getting it is being produced in the some of the galaxies which are colliding how many i mean how many thousands and trillions of kilometers away from us so due to this collatic you know uh, collisions so galaxies are colliding 
Yeah, galactic collision. Through that collision, galactic collisions, iron atoms are produced. That iron atom is making your hemoglobin moving around the whole the body, which is giving you the life energy of oxygen. So, how intricate these functions are, and still we are thinking that I have a free will and I have to do this. What kind of thought is this? So the the iron atom produced from a galaxy, a galaxy or the collision of galaxies and brought into Earth and transformed into your hemoglobin and that hemoglobin is supporting to make you think that I am alive and still we are thinking that I have a free will I will do things what I the way I want it is it has no explanation. Okay. So that karma is even that. galactic collision also a part of this karma nobody can go beyond that we can define we can classify the way we like yet these classifications also will keep changing as per the uh, uh, production of our uh, hormones a person a girl or a boy in the age of 15 or 16 will be having an approach or an attitude towards the world the same boy or girl when reach to 30 or 40 the approach will be entirely different definition of the same situation will be entirely different so how these thing changes are happening due to the influence or the decision of karma <coughs> excuse me from that decision our uh, hormones are being changed based on that change of hormones our attitude analysis definition everything will change so our job is just to accept the dance of the universe and not try to control it our duty as a human being guru ji then we come in the world and we're like oh my god i have so much to do in the world and it almost feels like now <laughs> that it's kind of foolish <laughs> to think that we can do anything like guru ji said we don't even have control over our own hemoglobin and it's so true that when we are young it's not that we have con- you know depending on the environment of your body which is also not in your control to begin with we can control a little bit of it with your food and uh, lifestyle but re- but but really it's kind of being controlled by a bigger cosmic reality so to understand then the duty of as a human being is to really understand how little we have in control and how important it is to us for us to constantly go back to non duality and find flow acceptance and surrender which does not mean that things won't happen in your life yes we'll go to school yes we'll have a job but that the tendency to have control and to just move against the resisting universe is really is really what entangles us guruji i have a question right uh, now there is a there is a brother of mine and i really admire him like amazing he's a great guy and uh, i hope he's not listening <laughs> but i'll tell you what he does if anything is impossible anything is impossible i don't uh, think it's the the i think uh, again there is a break i think network is uh, troubling us can you repeat the question once again Please. yeah yeah so guru ji i know somebody who is uh, who is he makes everything which seems impossible he makes it mm. possible so like literally we tease him that nothing is impossible for you over the years yeah. i've seen him doing tasks which you know this nobody can do this it's not going to happen you aren't going to change mm. this you can't convince this person and he does and he does it lovingly but he does it so guruji and then i compare myself to him and then i say for me if something doesn't work out i'll just say oh the universe you know this is the plan of the universe and i accept it and i surrender and then he just never gives up he never gives up he'll keep happening so sometimes i question myself that am i being a coward like is it cowardice on my part that i'm not trying 30 times like he does so how do you know that like i don't know how to that's a very confusing thing for me he is designed to be like that by this cosmic law and you are designed to be like this by the cosmic law instead of 
resisting or questioning the cosmic law better try to be in tune with the cosmic law and try to understand who is the designer of this cosmos that is what yoga says search you keep seeking the reality or the designer behind all this cosmic drama definitely one day you can find it that is what all our yoga masters or our uh, you know sages wonderful sages they declare that why do you cry just sit somewhere withdraw your senses and focus the mind within then through systematic practice one day you will come to know from where these decisions are coming and who is behind all these changes like fantastic it is written in kadho upanishad indriye bhya parahya artha adhebhyach param mana manastastu parabuddhi udhiratma mahan para mahadap param apyaktam avyekta purusha para purusha navaram kinjit sa kashta sa paragadi is clearly written in sanskrit meaning is indriye bhya parahya artha try to go beyond your senses indriya means sense so go beyond the senses there you will come to know your mind is playing manastastu para buddhi do go beyond the mind through focusing within then you will come to know there is an intellect behind that then buddhir atma mahan para go beyond your intellect then you will come to know instinct is there that is mahat the great reality your own instinct is an amazing experience just close your eyes and follow the master you will reach the destination there ardhepacha paramana manasutta parabuddhi buddhir atma mahan para mahadap param avyakta beyond the intellect unmodified state of existence like modern science now hypothetically they are saying there was a big bang after the big bang there was an unmodified state of existence electromagnetic radiation avyakta unmodified state but our ancient masters are saying that beyond that avyakta purusha para beyond the unmodified state of existence there is an intelligence a cosmic intelligence where you will lose your identity and you will become that tat tum asi you are that where is the confusion when you reach their master set you are that when we reach there we will say aham that's all aham brahmasmi so there is no confusion in this question what karma is and who is you know determine determining karma and how we can go beyond karma then from karma we can go to bhakti from bhakti we can go to jnana jnana means knowledge from karma action to devotion devotion to uh, knowledge from intellectual knowledge to instinctive and intuitive existence and experience this is what is meant for us when we reach any one of these levels we will come to know how to handle this life instead of restricting or competing with the cosmic law we will go in tune with the cosmic law because there is nothing other than my essence existing in this you know universe when we understand that wow so i want to start with what guruji first said when i spoke about uh, my brother and i said that he does everything that was beautiful what he said that he's designed like that by the uh, that that's how he's designed and this is what he knows and it comes to him naturally if something doesn't come to me naturally i have to honor how i am designed which does not mean that i cannot get inspired by somebody when the time is right i can get inspired by somebody in any department and if it feels natural to me when it feels natural to me instinctive to me that is that is going with the flow uh, the question the question becomes that we go too much into gather gathering of information of then putting it in our mind taking it through the intellect 
and really forgetting that instinctive, intuitive understanding. Whenever we have any experience in the world and we are able to disengage our senses and work instinctively, the action will just happen through us in that flow. At that point, we will stop running against the direction of the ship. We will be yes. going again with the flow. So the reality of our decision making is not outside. The reality is letting go of that uh, or the feeling I can control inside. And let us be whatever we are, as long as it continues to feel instinctive. And that's what Guruji had even said about Purushartha, Dharma, Artha, Kama, Moksha. That as long as we let our instinct, we learn to tap into our instinct, and we let that instinct, let the actions happening through us, just be that easy, you know, that ease, create that ease of flow within us, through us. Everything will just happen in music, in a rhythm, in that lahiri. Guruji, we should take yes. some questions. I want to take some yeah. questions, Guruji. Please. So Abhya asks, if I did something wrong to someone who has done something similar to another person, am I giving him his karma back or am I creating mine? There was a break in the network, I think. Repeat the question, please. So Abhya is asking, Guruji, Abhya is asking huh. that if I do something to somebody, uh, which, they, which they have, so let's say, I think I'm going to use an example. So let's say a person has been mean to somebody and she's asking that if she was mean to that person because that person was mean to another person, is she doing justice or is she creating her own, own, own uh, entanglement? Nothing to think like this. Go to the essence. In this nature, not even one leaf will fall without the approval of nature. A leaf will not come out without the approval of nature. Even your blinking of eye is being controlled by this law of nature. Then why should we try to explain what I am doing to this person, how I am, you know, explaining these things. Nothing to worry. Just go with the flow. If, just if, as I told you earlier, before I come out of the room, I can think that I am going to take my car and I will drive carefully. This is my thought and my wish. But what is meant for me on the road, who knows? Maybe one cat can jump in front of the car and I may kill it. How can I feel that I killed the cat? Cat was supposed to be killed like that. And I was used as a tool in the hands of nature. Same way, what we do to somebody is not deliberately we are doing. Whether we like or not, whether we accept or not. It, if it is meant to happen, it will happen. It is not supposed to happen. Never it happened. Again, guys, what I'm understanding from Guruji is that the challenge is not for making things happen in our life. The pain comes from the resistance we create. The pain doesn't come from the actions of the universe. <clears throat> it's, it's when we cannot settle into the moment of acceptance. Because when we settle... One more thing. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Uh, one minute, uh, Mary. Hmm. This pain, if it is meant to happen, I mm -hmm. mean, a, from my action, if a pain is supposed to be with me or a pain is meant for me, I will do a wrong action as far as our intellect is concerned. Why that pain is coming? I, do, I did a mistake. As a result of that mistake, I got a punishment. Why I am being punished like that? Nature has a purpose behind it. I went to a hospital to help somebody. And uh, because of that action, I got Corona. Just imagine. Then I can think that, oh, I did a wrong thing. Why I went there? I should not have gone there. These are all the things, the thoughts which is coming, th which are coming to me. But what is really happened? My body is supposed to bear the coronavirus. If it is 
designed by nature somehow i will get in touch with somebody from whom i can get the corona these are all designed but i may think that oh i went to that hospital only because of that visit i got corona these are all our comfortable uh, thoughts that corona if it is entering in my body nature is making a plan for me it will attack my immune system so my immune system will recognize it and it will fight against it and i will get proper antibodies against the virus if that is the decision by nature it will happen but i may explain in different different ways so this is what is happening in every walks of our life we will have explanations but only one thing is happening reality every action has a purpose behind by cosmic intelligence always be aware of that nothing is permanent in this world keep telling to us this is what gita said sama shatravcha mitravcha tadha mana apamaneyo chida ushna sukha dukha what does it mean all opposites shatru means enemy mitra means friend tadha mana apamana it's like praising or criticism heat or cold comfort or complications all must be taken care of and equally renounced this is what we have to do if we get that balance the master is saying that that is samachitta samachitta means balanced mind that's all so whether good or bad comes learn to tell ourselves that nothing is permanent then we will not be carried away with the uh, pleasures and we will not be put ourselves in despair uh, it uh, any kind of negative situations mhm 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 so gurji is saying that we are constantly trying to judge good bad and this judgment we have to let go yeah. of that judgment and again we come back to acceptance because yes. we because yes. we keep judging when we are in line with everything automatically whatever actions that are meant to happen through the universe will continue to happen and we maintain a witness we we meant we we continue to be a witness a non judging witness to our own lives and to the world around us and uh, yeah i i i see that guruji i see that what you're saying so guruji harshada has a question and um, mm. harshada i'm going to rephrase your question if you don't mind and tell me if i didn't do a good job but uh, so uh, guruji harshada's question is is more about papa and punya mm. what is papa and what is punya okay papa as sin punya is a sacred action correct no <laughs> if you take a coin one side is written papa other side is naturally it's written punya so sacred and holy and holiness cannot stay alone and same way this uh, papa the what is that particular one sin sin cannot stay alone in india there is a concept morning or evening or morning and evening there is a ritual in every house especially in hindu houses lighting a lamp which we call you know diya the ritual is before we light the lamp inside the house what we will do we'll go to the out i mean courtyard outside of the house we will lit a lamp what is that the poverty and prosperity lakshmi and shri lakshmi and mu devi jeshta bhagavati it is said shri devi is prosperity mu devi is poverty they are twin sisters goddesses one is for the prosperity one is for the poverty they are twin sisters and when we invite shri lakshmi the prosperity inside we cannot call only shri lakshmi as a shadow of shri lakshmi this goddess of 
um, poverty also will be there so first we light a lamp for the elder one keep her there hey goddess we are happy with you but please stay there then take the the uh, inside and light the lamp inside the house that means prosperity we are inviting inside so we cannot discriminate papa and punya sin and sacred holy we cannot do that every action will have equal and opposite reaction if we are into action we have to bear both consequences other thing if you see a crow is caught by a snake okay if this if snake is not getting food as the crow it will die because it has been you know starving for many days if you try to um, help the save the crow uh, mm-hmm. i mean the frog what will happen the snake the, will die snake will die if you save the snake the frog will die what will be your action whom you will save we cannot define we cannot explain what is papa and punya in that action if you want to know what is papa and punya go beyond this boat meditate bring our solar and lunar nerve together connect each other union between uh, ila and pingala positive and negative then the third factor will be evolving within there we will come to know we will have the i of stability i of reality will be exposed then this question will vanish so uh, what guruji is saying that we cannot experience abundance without experiencing scarcity you can't know what cold is unless you have experienced heat so yes. you know you can't experience you know eid and pingla are also opposites <laughs> their energies uh, so the then how do we live this life there's always constant duality and then guruji suggests again we go back to that practice and when we become these non dual beings our job is to constantly move towards being non non dual beings as long as we are dual beings all of this will keep happening whether we call it good bad power, it's a, it's a, it's a intellectual drama but our job is to our duty as human beings is not to make the world outside right is to really find ourselves back because when we do that we re- become true mediums of this cosmic dance we become that medium where energy everything just flows through us and around us we are not a resistance in the energetic flow of the universe anything True. else any duality makes us that barrier <laughs> makes us that resistance that against running in the opposite direction of the ship and uh we don't need to find ourselves back by doing anything else but by finding ourselves that's the only way we find ourselves back so guruji let's take a few more questions guruji vj asks guruji how can one navigate consequences of their own actions from past lives that are so burdensome and overwhelming so you know guruji that means you've come into this life and you know you have a situation and then the concept we hold on to is that oh this is karm this has come to me from my past life it's a continuation of that energy from my past life and she asks then it feels so difficult and so overwhelming and i know it's what the answer is going to be but yeah so guruji <laughs> what can uh, what can be done then for vijay this thoughts of past life are overwhelming but to some other people it's a nightmare some other people uh, it doesn't make any change that means see the hormones produced in our system if vijay is trying to uh, balance this production of hormone through systematic pranayama this emotions or feelings can be well managed by herself this is what is only possible actually 
this intellectual barriers are the tools of our material experience or enjoyments if duality is not there we all will become yogis and it will be a boring world we need, we need this complication when a complication comes we will try to compromise with it, with it or we will try to overcome it so that action is the driving force for our material life so we cannot give up we cannot ignore the material life but same time we don't want to be entangled in the material plane of consciousness so have this inner awareness of the reality or the supremacy of cosmic intelligence and be aware of the duties and uh, external karmas and enjoy with that uh, engage ourselves with the material life but same time connect ourselves with the inner reality then the inner balance or inner um, peace and ecstasy will guide us then the external complications will not put us down we should find the middle line between material life and spiritual reality that is the only way of living in happiness so guys again what guru ji is saying that when we are living in the world and we fear going to constantly engage engage in intellectual drama uh, we are not we are going to we are not going to find our way back our duty as somebody rightly pointed out that we are so fortunate the gentle poet to be born as humans and our and our duty as those human beings is to constantly find our <laughs> alignment inside to do the inner work to go back to our instinct and while we are doing that we will still continue to experience the world because our hormones are still at different levels at different ages and different experiences but we do both together there's an outer world that you're enjoying but you're constantly reminding yourself of that inner reality and as you keep doing that the experience of the world becomes sweeter and the discovery of the self becomes stronger and then eventually you know probably will come to a time guru ji where this experience of the inside self discovery becomes so much more real than the world outside but while we are here and while we are doing this that is our constant responsibility to go back to our instinct inside while all of this happens you know we are we are making that journey the journey we are doing is not of achieving this in the world and having this health and having this body and have the journey that we are making is is understanding the drama of the world inside enjoying it but finding our way inside and that really is the job of ourselves of us as human beings again we can explain hours and hours like this yes kaviji but the result is not coming through our intellectual cogitations if we want to experience this harmony again i repeat we have to spend minimum 24 minutes a day to hold the breath that only will lead us to this destination otherwise this will be a repeated conversation Yes, Guruji. Yes. So again, Guruji, there's a lot of questions. I'm just saying, wow. <laughs> And all the answers I know are going to probably be the same. So, Guruji, let's take two more questions. Sorry, Guruji. No problem. Get the number. You ready? Oh, don't use it. So Guruji, the, I think this question has come up a few times in different ways, right? Uh, the two mm-hmm. main questions that have come up: that if I think everything is preordained, I get a great, great excuse to become lazy and do nothing. And I'm sure Guruji is going to say that right now that was meant to be your essential nature. <laughs> that is what your nature is right now to you. And then the other question that that keeps coming up is that, uh, you know, what is the difference between dharma and karma? There is this kind of deep conscientiousness that oh, I'm supposed, for example, a mother, and this is a part of what uh, my dharma is. And even then, I I think I know what Guruji is going to say, but yeah, Guruji, what's the difference between dharma and karma? And also, um, you know, this concept of <clears throat> everything is happening. 
people can easily use it as a, as a way to become complacent actually in purusha artha as we discussed earlier dharma artha kama moksha in this purusha artha there is no word karma what does it mean there is no different difference between dharma and karma both are same due to uh, different uh, uh, you know like situations we have to use these words when something is involving everything when we see the abundance or the omnipresence of the reality we will use the word dharma when we uh, refer the omnipotence of this reality there we use karma but technically there is no difference between dharma and karma it is a cosmic reality which is beyond our intellect then artha kama so we have to understand the inevitability or the reality of this dharma based on that we have to design our the action for making money or prosperity dharma artha kama kama means again fulfilling our desires then the fourth one will naturally happen is moksha if somebody lives in this harmony with ecstatic joy he is not being entangled into this ups and downs of life that is what is called the life of moksha so technically there is no difference between the words karma and dharma makes sense and i know i mean this purusharth is one of my favorite topics while we've done a live before guruji i would have loved i would love to do it again i think we we'll, it comes so perfectly after karma and you know guruji even explained that that time that instinctively what what it's meant to happen through you at that point as long as you're tuning into your instinct it will feel very natural the technically we can call them dharma artha kama moksha but how much dharma how much artha how much kama how much moksha whatever is just going to happen through us we just have to keep finding ourselves back you know uh you know, oh. and even even that question right guruji when somebody asks that oh i will become complacent if i believe in this even that is intellectualization in a way even that's intellectualizing the conversation but that's not what oh. we are supposed to do at all uh <laughs> guruji keeps it's just this it's just going within and then automatically the action that's meant to happen will happen okay guruji let's take one more question and then we can finish it's already 9:30 but we had to start a little late i have a call right after this mm. okay sorry guruji i'm going to pick one question which is going to be useful to us if everything is predestined and preordained why pray then uh other than to have a relationship with god there is no difference between the relationship with god and prayer and self what is what is prayer technically people are performing prayer as giving reminders or request or applications <laughs> to god <laughs> but god is you know is not in need of any kind of reminder because he knows everything and the head as in want any application because he knows what to be provided any request because whether we request or not what is meant to happen will happen or what is given to us or supposed to be given will be given so in sanskrit prarthana arthana means taking everything as per our design as per the allocation there is no other word if a child is born it is supposed to drink mother's milk child is not in a position to request for that give an application for that and uh, no need to remind the mother remind the mother that i i need you know milk it is provided over there whether the child is aware of it or not but what child should do child should put the effort to drink it 
that's all and it should have a capacity to take it so we are like the infants of god and we are provided everything what we should do is just take it according to our necessity but how we will come to know the necessity look inside then you will come to know how much you need to eat how much you need to drink how much you have to absorb heat from nature how you process it and how much you have to breathe and how you have to breathe and when we balance this four definitely you will have comfortable sleep this is what is called panja bodha upasana or bodha shuddhi so when we do that that management of prana is called pranarthana or prarthana so we are getting everything as per the allocation of god god is not there to listen our request or you know like a reminders everything is provided so we should make ourselves healthy and happy to get everything according to our necessity that is prarthana or prayer great guruji i think i think guruji done a fantastic job of summing this up uh it's it's really we we determine everything by oh, by an external measurement and we are constantly seeing externally what needs to be done and it's foolish because even we know in our lives there is very little that has gone <laughs> it has created more effort but less but nothing it's it things really don't work that way so our then mm-hmm. our our role as a human being is not to constantly externally measure what needs to be done but is to constantly find that internal monitor that inner guru to oh. to allow that to lead our experience in the world the problem oh. is when we allow the external measurements to lead our experience in the world and even prayer again is about really tuning back into that internal guru and to inner guru and when we start allowing our instinct to become what really participates in the world we will be not running in that opposite direction we will be going with the flow we will be enjoying the universe in that state so again and again at every stage of our life our reminder is just to go inside and become instinctual oh. and do this yes. and then automatically like yes. guruji said if you are meant to become the president of the country you become the president of the country because you supported yes. the the flow of the universe not and that's what happened through you but not from you yes so okay. uh, train 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 the intellect to listen the instinct so make a union between intellect and the instinct yoga that will make us comfortable to know or about our own reality and responsibility that's all lovely goji this was lovely and uh, we'll talk about whether what next whether next we should yes. do the intellect and instinct which i think is an amazing topic or whether we should do purushartha but we will we will keep you guys posted thank you so much again guruji for all your wisdom pranam to you guruji and thank you to everybody for joining yes. us um, let's carry this with us let's go into our week not controlling action but accepting <laughs> and finding ourselves thank you guruji thank pranam. you all pranam pranam, pranam. pranam. namaste that was super useful to me i hope that was to all of you guys as well i had a conversation with guruji last week uh, where again there was so much happening in the intellect and he he taught me just you know this was a one on one conversation and he taught me just to go back just to settle into the instinct and let things just happen and flow so thank you so much guys all of you have a really good week i will see you i'll see you all again next week thank you